<laughs> I was born with a camera. When I came out, I had a camera and I was filming. No, I, um, well, uh, when I was young, I, I wanted to be a musician. I was a very, very serious uh, trumpet player. Uh, and then I, I realized I was very good, but there were people who were, in, you know, they were just great, you know. Uh, it was like being a, you know, a really good tennis player. And then there's, you know, Rafa or, you know, Roger Federer. You know, and you just never were going to beat them. And so I, I then decided I wanted to become a writer. And then at a certain point, I decided I wanted to make film. And so, so uh, I thought, well, I want to be a director because those are the people that, that make the films. And um, I actually got a degree in, in, in English literature. Um, there was no, no film program where I went to school. At, at, at that time, people didn't, there were very few. And I moved to New York and I started getting work as a film editor, which was actually a very good background. And, and I had also made short films, and some of them won awards. And, and uh, finally, and I, I just always thought that I would direct films. I mean, one, one of the films that I made, which is actually, you, it's, it's, it's on YouTube now. It's called The Garden Party, and uh, won a, a, a lot of awards and was, was on television and things like that. Uh, and then finally, um, I, I had a long association with New Line Cinema. Uh, so I was very close friends with, with the, the head of the company, the man who, who, whose company it was, Robert Shea. And uh, I used to do trailers for them. And at a certain point, you know, they, they were a distribution company, not a production company. And they decided that they needed to start making films and they wanted to make a low budget horror film. So I came up with with the idea for Alone in the Dark, and they liked the idea, and they said, "Okay, we'll 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 pay you to write it, and and if 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 we can raise the money, we'll pay you to direct it." So I wrote the script, and they couldn't get the money to make it, and then um, I got hired actually to do the fir first film that that Harvey Weinstein did, the Miramax, who's who's become very famous for something other than making movies these days, unfortunately. And it was called The Burning, which I edited, and it was a horror film. And so I actually, because I was never a big fan of horror films, but I, I learned how they work. And so I went back and I, I rewrote the script for Alone in the Dark. And then they were able to raise the money, maybe because the script was better, maybe the timing was better. I don't know. And then I did my first feature. Uh, and it didn't exactly set the world on fire. Um, and... I wasn't quite sure what I would be doing. And then the next film New Line did was um, Nightmare on Elm Street, which made a lot of money. And then they decided to do Elm Street 2. Wes was supposed to direct it, but Wes never really liked the project. And so he, he quit six weeks before they were going to start shooting. And so they asked me if I would take over. And I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to do a sequel to somebody else's movie. But some friends of mine said, don't be an idiot. The film will make a lot of money and you'll have a career and so i made the film and it made a lot of money and then i <laughs> worked as a director for the next 20 some years so that's the story the job of the director is to tell the story of the film using visual and sound um and so in order to tell the story of the film, you have to understand the story. Um, I, I talked to a lot of different directors and a lot of people work in very, very different ways. You know, some like to plan everything out ahead of time very carefully. Some don't like to plan it out very much at all. They like to go on the set and see what happens. Some rehearse, some don't like to rehearse. There are a lot of different things, but what they all do is they know the script, they study the script. The script is, it's, it's like you're a detective and you walk a crime scene. The script is the crime scene. So you walk into a room and there's a dead body with a knife sticking out of it. So you don't need to be a detective to say, oh my God, there's a murder and he's been knifed. Because that's obvious. So you start to look around and you look, you look under 
under the rug and you open the drawer and you check for fingerprints and you look and you check every single little piece of that room for clues to w what the meaning is. And very often the meaning is different than what you think. Maybe he just took a knife and did this, who knows? Uh, so that's kind of what you have to do. You have to become the world's greatest expert on the script. And then, unlike a writer who's, who's in a room by himself, or a composer who's in a room by himself, you're surrounded by other people that you're working with and they're competing. So what you need to do is to have a very clear vision of what that movie is really about. Not just the story, but what's underneath the story. What's the subtext of the story? What's the spine of the story? What's it really about on a deep level? Not, not the story, but what's below the story. Um, and then you need to communicate that to everyone. For instance, right, right now I'm working on a film about young female vampires. And like any vampire movie, it's about a lot more than vampires. It's about a lot of other things. Uh, and so, you know, this happens, that happens, that happens, that happens, and then, and then, and then, but that doesn't mean anything. But what's the story really about? So what I'm, the story is really about um, growth. And so that's the, the important thing here. So if it's about transformation, it's also about not trans non-transformation. It's about things that don't change. If it's about things that change, it's also about things that don't change. So you have some characters that are changing. A girl is realizing she's becoming a vampire. There's someone else, the drama, you have somebody who wants something and then you have somebody who wants to stop them from getting what they want. And there's drama. So you need to understand all, all of these things. And so if I say, if you're a, a costume designer and I say, this movie is about trans, it's about this happens and this happens and this happens, big deal. But if I say this movie is about transformation, now I start to think, okay, so the character is going to start off dressing like this, but then as it moves on, she'll start to change the way she dresses. She'll start wearing brighter colors or this, or uh, the set designer, the cameraman. He, and then now everybody's thinking along the same lines. And so you're the conductor of an orchestra. A good orchestra doesn't need a conductor to play a Beethoven symphony. But when there's a good conductor, which means that that person doesn't stand up in the audience in front of the orchestra and starts conducting, they've spent hours studying that, that score. And they understand it and they communicate it and they get all of those plus to have that same vision. Everybody's going in the same direction. So that's, that's what, what, what the job really is. I mean, on another level, it's just sort of, um, you know, being the leader of a group of, of you know, a hundred people or so and, and dealing very often with a lot of psychological issues. I mean, uh, you know, you hear stories about difficult actors and stuff like that. And, you know, how do you, how do you get people to do what you want them to do when they don't particularly want to do it? Uh, sometimes uh, maybe you need to do it their way because their way is actually better than your way. Um, so, you know, that's all part of the job. Um, and it's, um, it's very taxing. I mean, I mean, what I like about it is, um, you know, if you walk around most of the time using 20% of your brain, if, if you're directing a movie, you're using about 90% of your brain. Most of the time it's, it's, it can be exhausting, but it's also, uh, you know, it's, it, it's fun. It's, uh, exciting. And it's great to work with talented people. Well, there were, there were certain skills that, that I feel I kind of had, and there are other skills that I felt needed to learn, to, to, to learn. So um, film is two things. It's story and music. And when I say music, I don't mean literally music. I mean, it works in the same way that music does. It happens over time and it has a structure a piece of music, it goes up and then it goes down and then, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm trained as a classical musician, you know, so if, if you look at a movement of a symphony, give the theme and then you do the exposition and then you come back and you develop it and then you, you have it, you know, and there's an architecture to it. 
Um, uh, and it also it has a macro structure and it has a micro structure, you know, beat by beat by beat. And uh, audiences are very often not aware, of it, but that's very, very important. It drives, it's the motor that drives the film. Plus, you know, you need to understand the story. So having wanted to be a writer, having written, and, you know, I have, have written, uh, you know, three of my screenplays have been turned into movies. Um, uh, so, so I understand story and I understand the musical aspect. So I have those, those two things. I never thought I had a great visual sense. So I needed to work on that. You know, art museum, looking at movies, thinking about them, trying to, to, to get better at it. And, you know, eventually I have, you know, fortunately I'm not the person who's operating the camp. So I, I hire a good director of photography who can light the scene and I can give them the, I, I'm good at the concept of, of the scene. So I'm going to get a shot of you and I want you like, like so, and I want to see some books and maybe a room in the back, you know, and I can explain the shot, but then the director of photography then takes that idea and makes it into a beautiful shot, a good looking shot. You know, you're going to have a little light over on the, coming through the window on the right side, you get a little highlight on the side of your face and, you know, so on and so forth. But, you know, I, I and then I've, I've, I've learned from those people. And then the other, the other thing that I really had to learn was how to work with actors, which was probably the hardest part. Um, uh, and I, I had no interest in being an actor myself, but I studied acting, you know, with, with various teachers. And I did a little theater directing. And um, I, I felt that was the hardest part um, because uh, um, I felt other people were better at it. They, you know, I would have difficulty sometimes with certain actors and, and I wasn't quite sure, you know, what to say or what, 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 what to do. Um, uh, you know, actors are not like you and I, they, uh, you know, there's, there's a different thing, you know, so you wouldn't want to say to an actor, be more angry in this scene. Okay, because that, that, that's just an external effect. What is anger? I, you know, maybe when you're angry, you shout. Maybe when you get angry, you withdraw, you know? Maybe when you get angry, you raise your voice. Maybe when you get angry, you lower your voice. So what does it mean to say you're angry? It's much better to say, when he does that, it makes you feel blah. Well, I've, I've always said that I, um, I've had some of the best moments of my life on a film set and some of the worst. Um, uh, sometimes almost at, at, at the same time. Um, the, worst, the worst moments are when, when you feel like everything has gone wrong and, and you have no idea what, what to do. When I was doing my, my first feature, Alone in the Dark, that's so when I did my, my first feature, Alone in the Dark, um, which had kind of a low budget and, and a, a not very experienced crew and a, a not very experienced new line, not very experienced. And they were very worried about spending money. And we, we shot a scene that I thought would take two days. The producer assured me that I could do it in a day we, it, it was a night scene. We ended up shooting, um, starting at four in the afternoon and, and finishing around 10 the next morning. And, and the next we were supposed to shoot a, a riot in a, in a shopping mall. And we were supposed to start at four o'clock, but because we finished 10 o'clock or noon in the morning, we couldn't start until nine or 10 o'clock at night. And so we, we had no time and I was trying to, to do a very complicated scene with very little time. And basically I figured out a way to do it. And the production company, the producers decided to, to send home the actors that I needed to do it in this truncated. And my mind just went blank and I, I had no idea 
how to possibly shoot this scene. And that was, that was kind of a low point. And I, you know, fortunately there were other, other people around. Um, I, I told the cameraman, I said, I, I, I literally, I have no more ideas. My mind is just, I hadn't slept and my mind just stopped working. And so he came up with an idea and then I came up and gradually we figured a way out. The best moments are, you know, when you're working with, you know, uh, great actor and there are the, just these moments that happen in front of you that are just, uh, you know, you just moved or you're just, you're just seeing someone uh, you know, six feet in front of you, just do something in incredible that, that makes you emotional. So those are, you know, those are the best things.